Hi there everyone, my name's Ollie and welcome to my first video of many, hopefully. Enjoy! Cool, before we get the video properly started, um, a bit of background on me. I've been an amateur photographer for over 10 years and for the last 3 years I've also been using the GoPro as well. I'm extremely passionate about photography. Uh, I like using all sorts of equipment, including DLSRs, obviously the GoPro itself, and I also have a drone as well, which I'm uh, very fond of taking pictures with. So one of the biggest reasons I'm doing this video is because um, I quite like to teach and pass on knowledge, uh, and I also believe that anyone who has the smallest interest in photography should really get a GoPro. I really want to help people make that transition from maybe just using a, a smartphone every day for their pictures and then going maybe over to a GoPro and seeing how much it can really improve the pictures and the videos they're taking on a daily basis. So that being said I'm going to do a short video on the four basic modes that you would get from a normal sort of GoPro Hero 5, Hero 6. Uh, a lot of these techniques can sort of transition over to other GoPro models as well. I'm going to highlight some of the key areas of these modes. I'm also going to go across some maybe some tips uh, so you don't make the same mistakes I did so early on. Then you can get the most out of your GoPro uh, a lot quicker. So the four basic modes on the GoPro are video, photo, burst and time lapse. So starting with video, it's pretty self-explanatory and probably the most popular mode used on a GoPro. Video has three sort of main settings to choose from. It has your resolution, uh, your FPS and your FOV. So depending on what version of the GoPro you got, you can choose resolution or res for short. Uh, resolution can start from anything from 480p all the way up to full 4K. Um, choosing a higher resolution will give your uh, the raw video taken out of it a higher quality, you know, better sharpness, and also more information actually on the screen. Next is FPS, and that stands for frames per second. Uh, again, depending on what GoPro model you've got, uh, your frames per second can start anywhere from 24 frames a second all the way up to 240 frames a second. Footage shot on a higher FPS can give you a lot more freedom when it comes to editing later on. Uh, shot on a higher FPS means that you can slow the footage down and retain a lot of smoothness, that sort of professional slow motion that you see on a lot of adverts and GoPro videos, uh, action sport videos and even on some adverts. Shooting at a lower FPS will sort of come with that motion blur that we normally associate with more cinematic styles. Again, depending on what you're going out to film that day, choose carefully whether you need a high shutter speed for slow-mo or again a more cinematic style with a lower FPS. I'll do a video on FPS going into a lot more detail uh, in the near coming future. Finally, it's FOV or uh, field of view. Uh, field of view is kind of self-explanatory. It, you know, it's traditionally known more of like if a, a wide angle, you can see more from left to right, up and down, uh, and then you have more modes like a narrow view. Uh, the wide angle is considered more of the classic GoPro look. Uh, it's what you would generally find on action sport films. Uh, you know, the fisheye effect commonly found in skateboarding videos and other uh, action sports vids. The narrow view, again, uh, similar to lower FPS, is considered sort of maybe more cinematic. It takes away that fisheye distortion, leaving you a much flatter image. Again, similar to what you would get on more standard cameras and, again, smartphones as well. What we're going to look at next is photo mode, which is basically just still images. Uh, the still images on here can be taken in either RAW or JPEG. Um, again, I'll go. I'll do a video uh, in the near future about RAW and JPEG, their differences, yeah, their ups and downs, and again, choosing which one's going to be right for yourself. Uh, quick tip about shooting in RAW format. Uh, again, holds a lot more information. So when it comes to editing, there's a lot more you can pull back. So you can, you know, pull down the highlights, bring up the shadows. RAW format is only available at the moment in wide angle. Coming off photo mode, we have burst mode. So burst mode is something that's quite common today in a lot of smartphones. Open your camera, push your button, and it takes however many pictures you've got holding down for. The biggest difference between a lot of smartphones and the GoPro, not only can you set the amount of pictures you take, but you can also set the time frame that it's taken over. So for example, you can have three pictures taken in a second, all the way up to 30 pictures in a second. So one of the great advantages of burst mode is being able to take so many pictures over a short period. So you don't have to worry about missing that perfect shot. Take your 30 images, take your three images, and at the end of it, choose the best one. Finally, um, probably one of the easiest and coolest ways to capture footage on the GoPro is the time-lapse mode. You have two types of time-lapse on the GoPro. You have time-lapse photo and time-lapse video. You choose your intervals of how long you want the pictures to be taken, and then you'll end up with a result of separate images. With time-lapse video, 
it will take those images and compile it into one big video for you. Simply set up your GoPro, choose your interval of seconds, press the shutter button, come back after so long and then you get to enjoy this really cool time lapse. So uh, another tip uh, with time lapse, I would recommend definitely using a, a tripod, a flat surface or, or a steady mount. Um, you want the movement to come from your subject, whether that be the landscape, people, you know, crowds, stuff like that, as opposed to uh, the shakiness of the camera. Also with time lapse, I've fallen folly to it a couple of times. You want to press time lapse, you come back after five minutes. And depending on what your intervals of seconds have been set, you can get a very short clip. It's, it's not that great. So I would definitely recommend being patient. Set it up. Give it half an hour, 40 minutes. You know, If you've got a full battery, give it an hour. The results are going to be a lot better if you've got a bigger passage of time shown in that time lapse. That's the, my first video. It is a short and sweet one. It's just so you can get the basics and get the understanding of maybe your new GoPro. You're looking to get one. You want to see what they're all about, what you can do with them. It's a versatile piece of kit. Really small form factor, so it can go with you everywhere. It's much like your mobile phone, but the image quality is going to be a lot better. You can do a lot more with it. Uh, so yeah, uh, let me know what you thought of my first video. Uh, if you liked it, if you disliked it, if you think you can suggest any improvements I can make. Uh, I don't mind a bit of criticism, don't bother me. Uh, you can contact me in the comments below. Uh, you can also get hold of me uh, via my Instagram account. Uh, this is a new thing for me, talking to the camera with nobody else in here, checking all the equipment myself. I have normally work with a team of friends, uh, refer to ourselves as 190X Productions. And again, it's a lot easier when you've got four or five people concentrating on one project as opposed to one. Like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye. You know what, just for the record, this is the second time I'm filming this because although I pressed f***ing record, it f***ing didn't, did it? Well, at least that's working. Well, it looks right. You f***ing record now, are you? Absolute bastard, went for the whole thing and f***ing